Then we're going to talk about Airtronics 2.4 system airplane radios. And I wanted to start this seminar uh, with a basic statement, which is, we were right. From day one, Sanwa has been dedicated to using frequency hopping. There's been a lot of discussion about what the best system is. As the world starts to, the whole world, and I don't mean just the US, or I mean the whole world of RC all around, turns to 2.4, we find that the entire world is turning to frequency hopping. The main reason is that frequency hopping simply does a better job of dealing with interference. We use the entire band. We go through the entire band so fast that even if half the band is tied up with something, you don't even notice as a pilot or a driver. It moves right on through. So our uh, system, our basic 2.4 system is called FHSS1, frequency hopping in edition one, and that's found in all of our airplane radios, regardless of which one you buy. Frequency hopping, FHSS1, has uh, some nice features. It's very fast, latency is top five in the industry. The uh, system's very robust, it's hopping through many, many frequencies throughout the band very quickly. And the receivers are fairly inexpensive. We have full range receivers that start at give or take $50. And even our most expensive is less than 100 uh, frequent FHSS1 receiver. So as we see a lot of the industry switching and changing and deciding what they're going to do, I, I honestly got a little kick out of it because we really were right. Our engineers right on the front side went with the best equipment right off the top. Now, as we all know, no matter how good the technology is when you start, there's always a way to improve it. So in our competition, SD10 radio, and in our competition level car radios, we use a more advanced version of FHSS1. It's a more refined version called FHSS3. It's called 3 because it's the third generation. There was a second generation in there for car development. Didn't really affect airplanes much. FHSS3 is the fastest overall system on the market today. It's the fastest latency. And latency isn't just the frame rate, it's the entire program. From the time you wiggle the stick to the time the servo sees a signal, our radio is the fastest and that's just not my claim. That's actually our published numbers are more conservative than other testing companies that have published numbers. The other thing we do is we update all 10 channels or all six channels or all eight channels in every packet. A packet is the little bit of information that goes out each time it hops, right? So we update these little packets very quickly and we update all the channels. A lot of companies don't do that. To get speed, they only update the flight channels and the auxiliary channels, they might update every other packet or every third packet. So our system is very, very fast. In the case of FHSS3, we also repeat that signal, which means a servo is being told what to do, give or take, every two milliseconds. And that's why analog or uh, digital servos are so great, and it's why analog servos have trouble keeping up. Because digital servos can actually see that signal and respond to it. And that increases your holding power. So a digital radio actually makes a digital servo work better. And FHSS3 optimizes that concept. FHSS3 Airtronic systems also offer uh, what we call safety link, which you can make a unique air, uh, number for that airplane. So if you actually accidentally bring up the wrong model, you won't be able to fly it. It won't turn on. Uh, FHSS3 also offers programmable from the transmitter uh, on a little screen uh, fail safe on each channel. So each channel can have its own individual fail safe setting. Uh, fail safe is a really unique animal in a 2.4 radio. It's not like the old PCM days where the signal dropped and it went into PCM and you or fail safe and you had no control and it was a second or two to get it back. In 2.4, there's a whole series of other stuff that goes on first. 
And our logic is really, really advanced. The way it looks at the signal, looks at the interruptions, looks at the incomplete signals, and when it makes a decision about what to do. So uh, if you're flying an SD10G, you're getting the absolute latest in that technology. However, what I like about the radio, the engineers, it's their job to make all that stuff work, quite frankly. Um, what I like about the radio is when you actually get it and you go to use it, it's relatively user friendly. It's a menu system, which we can see here. I have it on the screen over here. Um, hopefully you can see that. The screen's obviously too little to hold up and show you. This is Larry's Panther. And what I wanted to show was first this menu. Whenever we set up a new airplane, we use this type menu. All of our airplane, new airplane radios, not the old RDS, but all of our new generation use a template system. Now in the case of Larry's airplane, we wanted uh, to be able to use all those 10 channels for a lot of other stuff. So we are using some Y harnesses where we don't necessarily need to uh, if we didn't have such a complicated airplane. We told it was an airplane. We told it, it had a normal wing as compared to a Delta or flying wing. We told it we had two aileron servos, one for each aileron. Uh, we told it we're going to use one flap servo input. We have a standard tail, which that one is a completely standard tail. This is where you would tell it you had a V-tail or you tell it you had two elevator servos. So if you have a 3D airplane, it uses two elevator servos. Uh, you'll have complete independent control so that you can get the movements exactly right. That's a big issue with dual elevator and this one does it. Also, if we were flying a twin, you'd have the ability to set up two servos individually and have an nine, independent nine point curve for each servo. So if you really wanted to get wound up about both motors accelerating perfectly the same, you can match those two curves up until they absolutely work perfectly exactly the same. So this is Larry's setup on that airplane, which you saw is pretty complicated. Then we come here, which is the second most powerful thing in the radio. This is the switch assign menu. Now there's a whole lot going on here. You can program in your dual rates. And if you notice the dual rates, there's actually three rates, not two. So it's really triple rates. And we can assign them all to different switches or all to the same switch or both. See, the or. You can actually control them separately and the other if you wanted to. Um, I don't, but you could. Um, all of our airplanes have uh, five total flight modes. So if you want to have a completely different airplane set up at the throw of one switch, you can set up all of the mixing, everything to be independent for each flight mode if you so desired. It lends to a lot of flexibility. Snap roll for the aerobatic guys, auxiliary channels of course, Larry's using some of those. Landing gear. Now landing gear, uh, of course everybody wants landing gear in a different spot. And so again, all of these switches are completely programmable and they're all three position switches. So you can't go, well, if I want to use this, I have to put it there. No, you can put anything anywhere you want on the radio. All of the mixes are here, uh, the, the preset mixes, elevator flat. We've got, uh, now this is something interesting. Larry was talking about his elevator compensation when he dumps out the flaps. That's controlled with flap elevator mixing. That one's not one we turn on and off with the radio. That one's just on all the time, so we chose on. Uh, rather than a switch position. We have all the channel delays working. See all these? You turn all these channel delays on and that's what's controlling uh, those slow moving flaps and that sort of thing. As we're walking through the menu, I wanted to point out increase, decrease. This function allows you to use this toggle. Unlike all of the other ones, this one self-centers. If you turn on increase, decrease, and assign it to these, you then bring up, say, a mixing function on the screen. Instead of having to use the cursor 
instead of having to use the cursor down here, you can use this switch while you're flying. So you need to have a little bit of elevator mix when you're doing a knife edge. So when you use a stick switch and elevator to rudder mixing turns on when you get to a certain position. So you get past that position on the rudder, the elevator mix turns on, and then while you're doing the knife edge, you reach up and click that button until the airplane knife edge tracks straight. Land, fly, land, adjust, fly, land, adjust. That cycle's gone if you use this function. All of our pattern guys use that adjustment constantly because they're always fiddling with the trim of their airplane in practice, not in competition, of course. Um, so everything is done in this menu. So right here, see where we have auxiliary and see where it's an and? For the sub flap to work, the flaps have to be up. That's position one. So if the flaps are no longer in position one, the sub flap goes away. So we didn't even have to use a mix it to make all this work. We simply use these Boolean commands right here on the switch assignment. What that does is that frees up those programmable mixes. If you need some other compensation later, we have the ability to do it. Third most powerful thing on this radio is the surface menu. This is where it tells you not only what functions plugged into what channel, but then all of your centering, EPAs, and actually you have a hard limit in case you have a servo that over travel would break something, you can actually adjust the hard limit. It's like a spreadsheet. You just go across, you just go down, you adjust what you need to adjust, exit when you're done. So you can see us doing that. See how the flap is taking over other movements. I love the servo monitor. All right, um, throttle curve, there's nine points. You can turn them on and off if you'd like. They're not all on when they come with the radio in default, you have to turn them on. Um, again, all the aerobatic guys wanted that. We do have some overrides so that you can't accidentally fire up your motor if you don't want to. We do have two idle positions, of course. Aileron differential. Remember we use it, we told the radio we're going to be using two aileron servos. So aileron uh, differential is automatically turned on. If you did not have that function turned on, it wouldn't let you adjust it here. It doesn't let you fiddle with stuff that you haven't turned on. Channel delays are all here. We use those a lot. So we, we have a channel delay. It's common to all the flight modes. It's for the uh, uh, auxiliary three, which is the air brakes. Uh, symmetry moves the same way each direction. And those are the times. You can do that to up to five channels. There's five channel delays that are programmable to any channel you want. There's a lot of trim controls. I don't use a lot of them. A lot of preset mixes. You can see them all here. A lot of the, again, aerobatic guys asked for this, a lot of the scale guys. Um, these are your program mixes. Whether you're flying a glider or a power plane or a helicopter, these C mixes are available to you. They're nine points if you want them to be. The points can be all over the place. So if you need, when you have crow in one position and you need down elevator, but you move it to another position and you need up elevator, the radio would do it with this function. You can actually have completely non-linear relationships by the nine-point curve. And you can make them common, common to all flight modes or individual. Use those a lot. Um, 